Hello and welcome back once again to Matt Ryan Photo. All right, so I don't know if you've kind of caught on to kind of my theme for the most part when it comes to the cameras that I kind of go out and shoot with. I tend to grab things that are not quite mainstream or not popular by the cool kids. I kind of like the cameras that are fantastic, but are also budget friendly. So there are a lot of cameras that are out there on the market, new and used, that just so happen to not be that popular. And why is that? Who knows? Trends, you know, some YouTube uh, influencer decided that, hey, this camera is really cool. So the whole world goes crazy for it, even though that there are other options that are out there that could be cheaper, could be better, could be close to about the same for a lot less price. Um, you know, there's just a lot of other options out there. Like for instance, when it comes to film photography, you have the top of the food chain, which happens to be the Leicas. Now, Leicas are also, you know, anywhere from $1,500 to $4,500. Um, and the glass is very expensive. There are a lot of like, let's say, uh, some of like the, the older Nikons, which I absolutely love. I think they're fantastic. But there are also other can, uh, cameras out there that are phenomenal that nobody really talks about. That, that take amazing photos, have amazing glass that you can pick up just absolutely dirt cheap and you can really, really make beautiful, amazing photos. And this goes for digital as well. There are a lot of digital cameras out there that nobody ever really talks about. They don't they're not in the, in the spotlight. Like for instance, you know how much I like, based on my, my previous videos, my little Olympuses. They are fantastic cameras and you can get them for a steal. I mean, cheap. And they do amazing work. Well, today I wanna to talk to you about this guy. This is the Canon EOS 650. Now, I love this camera so much, I actually have two of them. Um, why do I have two of them? Well, <laughs> uh, I won one in an auction, and the second one I saw uh, for half the, the asking price, 50% off, um, at a estate sale. So I got it for like $16. And I'm like, well, you know what? I love the camera, I use the camera. Uh, I might as well buy a second one. Just in case something happens to one, I have the other one. It's just sitting in a, sitting in its nice leather Canon case on my shelf. Um, so people tend to not like these because there's this whole like I don't know. I, I just I don't know what it is. It's some like cool kid thing that you have to have fully analog control over your camera and i get it i like the tactile feel of fully analog that's one of the reasons why i went with my fuji xt5 because you have those dials on the top you have a tactile analog like feel i i get it to a degree but at the same time it doesn't really matter does it i mean if you can come up with a really good way to to, to make your adjustments really fast and on the fly and on the spot What's the difference, right? Well, that's where this EOS 650 comes in. This is an autofocus electronic, well, film camera. And it works splendid. It does an amazing job. It's solid, it's solid built, really, I mean, just it's plastic, but it's like really like high quality. It has a really good heft to it, a weight to it that, that is just amazing. The viewfinder on it is nice. It's big, it's crystal clear. Um, and you know what? One of the best things about this is it uses Canon EF lenses. Yeah, EF lenses. EF lenses are still being made. They're still professional quality EF lenses. 
cannons still build them. You have a ton of, of like options to choose from when it comes to the EF mount system. And these this uses it. So you're talking about using modern glass with film. And that is a really cool thing. I mean, really, really cool thing because modern glass has a different look than, than retro glass, vintage glass. I, and I like both of them. I like modern glass and I like vintage glass. It just depends on what I'm doing. Vintage glass has a, a just a, a, a different appeal to it, a different look. It has a different type of vignetting. It has just like a different coloring to it as stuff like that. But overall, I would say modern glass is higher quality. Now, some people are probably going to yell at me for saying that. Well, you can yell all you want in the comments, but overall, uh, modern glass is higher quality. Better coatings, more crystal clear, um, just ground better. It, you know, the autofocus system works really good. The, the, the focusing works really good. Um, just everything about it, it's really good. And that's where this comes in. And it, it just, it's, it's an amazing little camera. I mean, I have lenses, tons of lenses for it. And these aren't even expensive lenses. These are actually really cheap lenses. Um, this is a 35 to 100. I mean, look, it, it doesn't even want to stay, <laughs> eh, you know, but you know, it still does a very good job. Um, this is a 35 to 70 that I have on there right now. And I have, what other one did I bring with me? Oh yeah. Probably my favorite all time lens that I have is a young Guno, young Nuno. Um, I don't know. I can't, I can't really pronounce it. It's, a cheap very extremely cheap version of the Canon nifty 50. so this is a 50 millimeter f 1.8 and it's made from plastic i mean listen to this thing it, it sounds like shh, it sounds like crap um it's got a sh extremely loud focusing sound listen listen to that um but it takes really good crystal clear photos for being like a $40, $50 lens. I bought this for my old Canon um, uh, Rebel T7. Like one of my first, my, like my first camera that I somewhat kind of tried to use professionally. And I, I love this lens so much that I kept it because it, I, I didn't need to buy the Canon Nifty 50 1, F1.8 because I had this one, it works fine. Um, and it works on this, it works on this, works fantastic. Okay, so I'm gonna go over this pretty briefly just because there's nothing really like super fancy about this. Um, but you got a nice little display on the top showing you your different settings. Um, what setting you're in, if you're in program mode, aperture priority, shutter priority, or full manual. And you can do full manual with this. Uh, it does take a little bit more uh, moving it around and playing around with the functions and the features and stuff like that that go into a full manual mode But it's actually not difficult to do Normally if I'm just out shooting like always I'm just gonna throw it pretty much into aperture priority mode just because it's So much easier. It just it, it really is um, if I don't have to be in uh, If I don't have to be in manual And I'm just doing regular walk around shooting then normally I'm going to be an aperture priority. Um, so anyway, so you can change this over to like, for instance, AV is aperture priority mode. And you just simply set your aperture by moving this uh, dialog wheel here. So as you can see, it's really sunny out. So I'm going to put this at pretty much F16. I'm going to run with the sunny 16 rule and then it's going to meter and set my uh, shutter according to the light and what my aperture is at. So that's pretty much it. Exposure compensation, you can put that on here. So if you wanna uh, compensate for your exposure, you can go up five stops, plus or minus, which is pretty good. A lot, a lot of cameras only go up, uh, with exposure compensation, they only go up two. So this actually goes up five, which is pretty slick. To autofocus, you simply point to your viewfinder and you have press your shutter release and it's going to focus on what you're looking at. And it does a really good job. It, I've, I've rarely had any photos misfocus on this. Um, and I'll show you, right now I'm gonna throw up a bunch of uh, photos I took with this in Maui. 
So here you go. On the back side, you have your manual ISO adjustment. So it this does read the uh, GX codes, but you can manually adjust it. So if you want to push something to, let's say, uh, a couple stops, if you want to push or pull, you can do that right through here manually. Uh, you have a battery indicator. It'll tell you what your battery life is like. And then you can have it set to rewind your, your uh, uh, film before it runs out. If for whatever reason you want to take the film out, uh, early you can do that and of course you have your, your continuous shooting your timer and single shot and to load film on it it's pretty easy it's just like any other 35 millimeter camera that's out there pop it open put it in there close it and it's gonna load now what's nice on these is that it actually gives you a little window more of the modern uh, cameras, they give you this little window on the back here that shows you what film you have in there so you don't necessarily have to keep a reminder on the back to remind you what you have in there because I never use those reminders and a lot of the cameras I have, like for instance, right here, I don't have a reminder on there. So sometimes I actually forget what the hell I'm running in my camera because sometimes I have four or five cameras loaded with film and I shoot some here, shoot some there, switch up cameras so on and so forth and by the time I'm done uh, I'll sit there and pull it out and be like oh wow okay that was Lomo purple not not portrait 800 <laughs> you know so it's like I'm sitting there shooting thinking I have portrait 800 in there when it's actually Lomo purple so it's good to know what film you have because that's how you can get certain looks so anyhow let's load this up I'll show you how easy it is to load it. So loading the film is just like with any other camera that's out there in the world, uh, 35 millimeter. Uh, it's really, it's really, really simple. Pop it open. Put this in there like so. Drag it over where it says to drag it over to. There's little arrows in there. And then close it. And turn it on. And there you go. It's ready. It auto winds, does everything for you. So let's go take some photos. I am out here at uh, a wildlife preserve or a nature preserve at General Mills, uh, the company General Mills. As you see behind me, that's actually part of General Mills campus. And yes, General Mills, Cheerios, stuff like that. It's all General Mills. Well, there's a chunk of land behind me where I am going to be shooting that is, from what I understand, completely virgin, never been developed, it's all wetland and marsh. And it's my first time here, and we're gonna go see what it looks like. But as you can see behind me here, just beautiful creeks, nice little bridges, just, just a lovely place. Just tons of nature, nice, cool, summer, breezy day couldn't ask for a better day to be out on a little path and enjoying nature and taking some photos this is what to me what photography is all about it's getting out into your environment getting out of your house and just capturing anything I mean even if, even if you're not into photography just getting out and just enjoying the beautiful nature or your beautiful environment if you're in a city, going to see that, or a town. Just okay, but that's that's what photography is to me.
You know, I just now realized that this phone has a cinematic feature, uh, which is what I'm using right now. <laughs> so previously I wasn't recording in cinematic mode, which I think would have probably been nicer to do. But anyway. So the 50 millimeter just didn't want to work properly. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with that. So I threw on 35 to 105. take a few photographs with my iPhone Pro 14 or iPhone 14 Pro whatever that's called I, I just got it just for like a comparison I mean it's hard to compare digital with analog but might put it in some perspective so here we are at the end of the film and at the conclusion and in my opinion, I just said it at the beginning, I love the camera. What's your opinion? Please share it in the comments below. And, you know, here's some comparisons with digital to film. And, you know, which do you like better? Me personally, with these photos here, I prefer film. I prefer the way the light is captured on film than I do on the digital sensor. Again, share below which one you prefer. Thanks again for watching. Please hit that like, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.